mother, mother, sweet precious mother, I saw you with God last night. He was holding to your hand, showing you around in a promised land.
in the mud. Me, I'm thinking about settling down. Wherever I go, wherever I'm bound, I carry on. Human will so strong. Two years ago, we laid mama to rest. Went to meet the Savior in a brand new dress.
of service outside. We will have singing and preaching outside. Service starts at 10.30 Sunday school for right now. will have to be postponed at this time. But service will start at 10.30 next Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all moms out there. We love you all. We're thinking about you. We care about you. Mothers are something that are special. Moms and dads make up a family, but moms are the ones that, when my kids got hurt, something happened, they wanted to get a hold of mom. You mothers out there that have moms, or you're a mother, or if, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, my mom really wasn't real good to me. Or, I really didn't ever have a mom. Well, I tell you what you do. You get a hold of one of these ladies, one of our elders in our church, and you adopt a mother. And you get a hold of one, and they will teach you and learn you uh, and help you and get you stronger in your faith and just get a hold of a good Christian lady in the church. Moses, we're going to be on the first verses. And Moses had a great mom, Jochebed. Moses was a man of God that in his lifetime, I tell you what, Moses was strong, and because he had a strong mother, I think about Moses as he was born, Pharaoh charged all the people to get rid of all the boys of the Jewish people at the time. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. So every son of the Jews that was born was supposed to be drowned and thrown into the river. Pharaoh was very evil. Next verse is, And there went a man out of the house of Levi, and took the wife, the daughter of Levi, of the Jews, and the woman conceived, Moses' mother conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, and he was goodly, a goodly child, she hid him for three months. Now you've got to realize, this is out there where the alligators are. This is out there where the snakes are. This is out there where anything could have gotten this little baby, three, just born, up to three months, hiding. Moses' mom wanted to save that son. How many of you mamas would do anything for your babies? You'd give your life for your kids. I know you would. My mom would do the same thing. She would give her life for her children. If you're a mama that loves a man, I tell you, Moses' mom loved his, her son so much. And I'm going to tell you now, wouldn't trade nothing. You know, we got good moms in this church. They watch after their children. They're an example for the children. They come to church. They live a clean life. They try to do what they can for God. And those children are watching their mothers. But she could no longer hide Moses. She took it for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime or asphalt and with pitch and sealed, the, sealed it up. And the children there, and she laid it in the flags and the reeds by the river's bank. Moses' mom was, you know, you know, God had to show her what to do. When you're a Christian mama, and you've got a little baby, you're never alone. When you're a Christian father, and many fathers are raising children by themselves today, and you're mom and dad, I've got such respect for you guys. You should keep it up, keep it going. Those kids will never forget you. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. Moses' sister stood afar off and watched what they were going to do with this little baby when they found little Moses. And a daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Pharaoh's daughter came down to wash herself, and her maids walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, the reeds, she sent her maid to fetch it, to go find it, to see what it is. 
What I like about moms are they're always looking out for their children. Many of your mothers, when you were growing up, canned food, filled the freezers up, got ready for some serving. They knitted. They did whatever they could. They sewed your clothes to make sure you had clothing to wear to school. Mothers were always looking ahead. Moses' mom was looking ahead for her child. She was watching out for little baby Moses. She didn't want him to be drowned by Pharaoh. Man, I love moms. I'd do anything for, i do, man, mothers need more, you don't never know. When I see these little children that need a mama, I just want to cry because I just, I wish they had a mom like I had. Have my life. These babies out there, they don't know where they're going to go, where they're going to stay. They, they, they stay up all night. They don't get bath, they don't get bathed, they don't get their diapers changed. And all these things, and it bothers me, folks, because as your pastor, I'm so thankful to have been, been brought up in a Christian home, a mother that loved me. And you can be that way. You can be your mother that way. You may not be today. You may not be saved today. But your children are watching you and watching how you're living and how you're treating them. Treat them good. All my kids have went out of the house now. We're empty nesters. All my kids now are raising their own kids. But you know what? Mother's Day is something special to me. I promise you, if the Lord lets me live and Lord willing, creek don't rise, I'll be out to see my mom tomorrow. Mothers are special. If you're struggling as a mom, Remember that that baby's depending on you. They're looking up to you. And she had compassion on him and said, This one of the Hebrew children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? God had it in control. Yes, it was taking up care of Moses, his mama. He wasn't drowned. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. I can see God in the works. This little baby could have been drowned. This little baby could, not, could have not been, not been there. But Moses' mom was given direction by God to put him in the reeds, bulrushes, and to stay there safely. And I want to ask you, how about your mama? Some of you may have moms already in heaven. Wait, they're probably looking down now, saying, I won't be long, honey. I'll meet you when you come through that gate. But the biggest thing, you got to be saved. I can see moms, no doubt, in my mind. I think about it a lot. I think the biggest thing for most Christian mothers is to make sure their children are saved. I've got many in our churches that I may not see it, but I want my kids saved. Pastor, if something happens to me, please don't give up on my children. Believe me, I won't. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Not only did she get to nurse her own baby, Moses, but she got paid to do it. You're talking about a God that loves us. He takes care of us, and he watches over us, and he brings joy to our lives. And this mama was happy. How many of you are happy tonight? How many moms are you happy? Man, oh man, oh man, aren't you glad of your children? Aren't you happy with them? Aren't you glad that you got them? And some of them might be rascals. Some of them may be ornery, but weren't, weren't you ornery? Some people, so I get kicked out some mamas and dads that they, you know, they get older like me. They act like they never did anything wrong when they're growing up. Don't tell me that. I know. I was a rascal. Because I drew him out of the water. Child grew and she brought him and Pharaoh's daughter. And 
came her son and she called his name Moses and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Jochebed, Moses' mom, was taking care and got Moses grown up, became the leader of Israel. You're talking about someone that takes someone from almost nothing, almost drowned to the leader of the greatest country ever. Praise God, Israel, God's chosen people. Moms are one that comfort us. I always, I, sometimes I babysit for my grandbabies and kids and Keep them, you know, and watch over them. And biggest thing with one of them, you men, you've got to have a bottle ready. You get that bottle warmed up just enough, that milk warmed up in the microwave, just enough where it won't. Make sure you got tested. Some of you guys ain't never done that. you got to test that milk. Some of these dads, you know, anymore, they don't do that no more. That's mama's job. I'll tell you what, it's all our jobs, amen? As one whom his mother comforted, so I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When a mother's there, she comforts the child. She, she takes, she feeds that child. Whether it's breastfeeding or milk feeding, that child, when they are fed, all of a sudden they quiet down. They're comforted. They're taken care of. Praise God. Next verse says, we're going to get a little excited here. I can just feel it coming. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do that, that you may be well with thee, and that you are increased mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord with thy God. Moms, love your Lord. Love God. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Moses' mama brought, got in there growing up. Started as he got a little older. She, he had to be taught. Kids are looking for help. I just wish, if I was just a little younger, I would start up a place with Christian teachers. I would start up a place with Christian nutritionists. I would start up a place with Christian physical people that knew how to train. I would most of all teach people that loved our children and teach them, number one, about God. Now shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Whenever you're sitting with your children, let them know about Jesus. One of these days we won't be here. They need to hear that testimony. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be as frontless between thine eyes. My, oh my, my. Paul talking to a young man named Timothy. And Timothy had a great grandma and, and a, a mama that were faithful people that loved God. And Timothy, my own mama, if, you got a, if you've had a grandma that was a Christian, if you have a mom that's a Christian, you should be jumping up right where you're at this morning on Mother's Day. And why not start it now? Why don't you start the new trend? If no one in your family's ever been saved, why don't you start that new trend as that mama that loves God? And then that next child that comes up that you birth, it will follow you and they will become a Christian grandma and mom for that next child. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, Paul talking to Timothy, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. That without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers day and night. I think one of the most important things for a pastor, a church, teachers, is to pray. I want you to pray for Earlene Skiles. She just found out she's got cancer. I want you to pray for Wally Whiting. I want you to pray.
pray for so many others that we've got that is very ill. I want you all to remember these folks, whether they have cancer, heart trouble, whatever it is. I want us to pray day and night for them and let, let God do what God can do when he hears us call upon him. When it called, remembers the unfinished faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois. How many of you remember your grandmas? How many remember the hankies? Mm -hmm. Woo! They get happy in church. You, you know what? These folks think today they got something new going on. They get all rounded up and yelling, you know, running around. They ain't got nothing. I've been in services when I was 18 years old. People run around the church. I've been around churches where those hankies were hanging on like this and grandmas, man, they'd be 90 years old and they'd be swinging their hankies. You'll never forget it. Man, you'll never forget it. Man, I just pray, pray that we get back to that point where every mama, man, they, they get so filled with the spirit, they don't know what they're doing. They just move that hanky. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're messing out on great. I get high on Jesus. I get it's high on free. I get high freely. It don't cost me a bunch of money. Man, I wouldn't give you a dime for any drug out there today that's going out here that's killing our young people. I'll tell you what. I get high on Jesus because he loves me, cares about me, and he's got a home prepared for me up in heaven. One of these days, folks, you remember that. Which dwelt first in my grandmother Lois and my, my mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in the other. Uh, what happened? Timothy learned from Paul, and he learned from his grandmother and his mama, and he kept it, and he learned, and he had faith of his grandma and mother. Moms, you are important today. You're the glue of the family. Dads, you're the glue of the family. And daddies, you're out there. Get involved with your families. Keep them going. Keep them going. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting it out of my hands. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Last verses I got. I'm not going to keep you long this morning. You guys have been eating and you're probably ready to go to sleep on me anyway. If you were in the church, I'd get my squirt gun out. That's what I got now. You, I just bought me a new squirt gun. If anybody falls asleep, I, I tell you what, if you come in this church, you won't fall asleep. I ain't going to be like that old boy sitting up here. And that boy, one boy fell asleep and the preacher preached for an hour and a half. If I preach for an hour and a half, I want everybody to fall asleep. <laughs> old boy was over there and he started snoring. Everybody looking at him. He been preaching an hour and a half. And that preacher goes over to his wife. She looks at him and she says, you put him to sleep. You wake him up. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. We got time. I enjoy preaching the gospel. I enjoy it, but I tell you what, I've been in services, man, where a preacher will preach that same sermon ten times. He rabbit hunts. I say, let's let's get with it. Let's get with it. When we preach the gospel, let's let people know about Jesus Christ. Let's let them know about the blood. Let's let them know to be born again. You got to be born again to get to heaven. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. But let's get with it. Next. Jesus' mom, Mary, gave birth through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, raised him up until he was 30 years old and he took over and started his ministry. She saw him raised up at 12 years old. He was teaching in the temple. At 12 years old, he was a rascal too. And I see him, I'm going to say, you're like me. He, got, he didn't come home. He didn't go with them when they left. He's back there talking like I do all the time. Talking about God. Jesus, I can just sing talking about God. Hey, you need, you need to get God in your life. Well, mom and dad took off. Jesus was left behind. They had to come back and find Jesus at 12 years old. But he was teaching in the temple. He was telling them about God. Mary saw that. She saw how he worked under his earthly father, stepfather, Joseph. Mary saw that. Then as Jesus 
was beaten, going to the cross, she saw that. When he hung on the cross, she saw that. When he gave up the ghost, she was there. When the blood came down the cross, she was there at the foot of the cross. This is Jesus' mom, Mary. But she got to see something that I'm glad she got to see. She got to know that her son was risen again after three days out of the tomb, rose again, and she ascended to God the Father. Now, I can just see Mama so distraught. Here's her baby, the one she brought, carried for nine months, rode a, a, a donkey or camel, whatever, for miles and miles into Bethlehem. And here he is hanging on that cross for you and me. And he gave up the ghost. He died. But thank God she got to know, she got to know, got to see Jesus had risen out of that tomb. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly up toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Two angels stood by them. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. If you don't like shouting down, get on a cloud with me. Amen. If you don't enjoy the salvation, something wrong with you. I feel good tonight. You know what? I want to ask you something from the bottom of my heart. What if Jesus raptures the church, believers, on Mother's Day? Wouldn't that be a day on Mother's Day? All the mamas come up out of that tomb that's went on, and those that are alive and remain shall meet them in the air, and then we see Jesus up there meeting Jesus for the first time. You gotta be kidding me. I want you all to think about what we got to look forward to. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood with peril, white peril, and next verse. Which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up for you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He's coming back, and we're going to meet him in the air. Praise God. Can you, I can't imagine seeing Jesus for the first time. Face to face. Hugging, holding, giving him a bear hug. My, oh my. That's what my goal is, folks. I've been on the way a long, long time. A lot, a lot of miles. But I'll tell you why. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. They returned they on to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And this is the last two verses I have. And when they were come up and went up into the upper room, where abode both Peter and James, and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James and the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelots, and Judas the brother of James, these all contended in one accord in prayer. Can you imagine knowing that Jesus hung on the cross, was in the grave three days, rose again, they saw him ascend to heaven, praise God, and now they're up there in glory in a room together, and guess who's with them? Let's find out. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and is with his brother. Moms today, you're special. Moms, I want you to know I have respect for you. It takes today, it takes dads and moms. I'll be preaching on Father's Day not too long. But moms, I want you to know 
Your children aren't going to forget the first time you held that little one. You got the little pat on the back side and you put the baby on your chest. Kept that baby fed, comforted that little one. He knows he heard your voice for nine months. She heard your voice for nine months. Then it grew up. <clears throat> Always when there was trouble, problem. Mama was there. Mom was there. When everybody else was going against their child, mom was there. When you get ready to graduate. Mom's there trying to fix your tie. High school. When you got married, you had your tuxedo, whatever you had on a suit. Mom was making sure your hair is calm. You look presentable. When you had your first child, your, her grandchild, mom was there. Moms, during World War II, moms and grandmothers in the hills of West Virginia, Kentucky, many other states all over the, our country, but they said they could hear moms and grandmas praying of an echo through the hollers, watch over my children in the war. This country, when it got bad, most of the men had to go unless they were older, had some kind of couldn't do something disability to go to war. Mothers went into the factories so we could win that war against those folks that were trying to destroy America. Moms, you're tough. Mothers, you're special. We're going to have an altar call right now. Thank you, Mom. Precious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the mothers in our country. What a special, special people the moms are. They're tough. I can't imagine a man going through a childbirth. I can't imagine a man being able to take the pain that the women take to bring our children into our world. They're tough. Be with them, comfort them, help them. I want them to know that they're special. They're special. God bless all mothers. In Jesus' name, amen.